We're looking forward to driving the Punch EV tomorrow, but before that, to help us understand the engineering of the Punch EV, we have with us Anand Kulkarni, who is the Chief Product Officer of Tata EV. Anand, the first question I need to ask you is that, is the Punch EV your Gen 2 platform? Uh, yes, so it is based on the uh, active architecture, hmm. uh, which is what we were colloquially calling the Gen 2 platform hmm. previously. We've talked about the three generations. So the uh, Gen 2 platform is the active EV, which hmm. is a pure electric platform. And the uh, Punch is the first product that's deployed on this pure electric platform. So how different is this from the Nexon EV? Uh, there's a lot of difference. Hmm. So first of all, I think we need to understand that uh, we now define this entire architecture in four layers. Okay. The first layer is the powertrain, uh, which is the EDU, the battery and the propulsion uh, electronics parts. The second layer is the chassis, which is, as we understand in uh, uh, ICE parlance, mm. the platform. Mm. And then there is the third layer of uh, connectivity, mm. and the fourth, which is the END architecture, the electrical and electronics uh, architecture, which then gives you additional features, the infotainment and so on and so forth. And the fourth layer is, of course, the cloud connectivity. Mm. So the difference here is that it has a completely different uh, underfloor. Mm. Uh, and what is different? For an electric vehicle, uh, you need to manage the masses of the car and therefore the crash impulse. Mm. And we have managed this uniquely without the constraints of a legacy ICE platform. Mm. So we have uh, widened the underfloor area which could seat the batteries. Mm. The batteries have gone more orthogonal, which means very geometrically uh, symmetric and uniform, which means we can package more uh, standardized modules inside, mm. and that leads to better packaging efficiency so far as uh, the entire battery cells and battery structure is concerned. Mm. Uh, the third thing is also that uh, because of the mass of the cars, the sills need mm. to have a significant amount of support mm -hmm. and uh, this really helps in terms of uh, side load impacts mm. and this has been optimized uh, to a very large extent so it means a lot of uh, high strength steel components in fact uh, the level of updation that we have done on the platform is so high and, and it is significantly uh, optimized as well it has given us also weight reduction benefits of between 10 and 15 percent on the mechanical platform itself and it's helped us reduce the uh, parts count by between 5 and 7 percent mm -hmm. and at the same time it's given us more rigidity more robustness and therefore the torsional uh, stiffness on the platform mm -hmm. or on the architecture has gone up by 30 percent mm -hmm. which then means uh, you have uh, so much improvement over ride, handling, refinement, etc. Yeah. So uh, therefore, in, in, in that sense, it's a completely redesigned uh, underfloor. So the underfloor, the size remains the same as the combustion punch, right? The footprint remains the same. In terms of the parts, how much is the commonality between the combustion engine punch and the EV? So on the underside, there is very little commonality. Mm -hmm. But because the form factor on top has to mate with the uh, underfloor, mm. uh, there is a lot of commonality on the top. Mm. Of course, the uh, top has also undergone significant changes because uh, some part of the uh, crash impulses and the weight and durability expectations have to be managed mm. by the top structure as well. But on the underside, uh, it is significantly different. For example, also look at it this way. Uh, the underside has been uh, modified or completely changed in order to do subframes, uh, mm -hmm. which can then uh, keep the electrical uh, propulsion units. The rear side is now capable of, if if we wanted to, capable of doing a uh, rear wheel drive. Of course, okay. uh, we are talking about an architecture mm -hmm. here, not mm -hmm. necessarily a product. So, punch is too uh, very compact footprint. So, mm -hmm. you might argue about a four by four on this, not needed. But then, when this architecture gets deployed on future products, mm -hmm. uh, for example, uh, the Curve, the Sierra, mm -hmm. and the Ita and the Harrier EV that we mm -hmm. are trying to do, mm -hmm. uh, then uh, uh, all of these enablements uh, become possible. Does this have independent rear suspension? Uh, so for now, uh, on this pro product, there is no independent rear suspension. And uh, because it doesn't have an all-wheel drive yeah. capability, it is not needed. Mm -hmm. So it has a twist beam uh, suspension. The still. suspension pickup points remain the same? Uh, as they the remain combustion? very similar. As yes. the combustion EV? Yes. And th that's because, again, as I said, they have to go on, uh, onto the top hat. And, and also commonality. You, know, you have your cost efficiencies with it. Correct. But if you've done so much, 
why didn't you do like a whole new top hat yeah so the whole new top hat will happen with uh, some of the later products that we do but look at it this way the uh, punch is an exceedingly brilliant uh, nameplate uh, mm. right from its uh, initiation uh, about 2 years back it's done extremely well mm -hmm. it's small compact footprint and its upright seating position mm -hmm. makes it a very ideal vehicle uh, when be it in the city or be it on the outdoorsy kind of thing and therefore to be able to have this in terms of uh, electric propulsion mm -hmm. you carry on the benefits mm -hmm. and the uh, significant advantages of its form factor in the ice avatar and that's the advantage and also you have the legacy benefits correct the punch is a very strong selling it, it, it is a very strong yeah. brand yeah. it's a very strong What's the weight difference, punch EV to ICE? So the, uh, we have two batteries. Mm -hmm. There is a battery on the punch.ev and then there is a, a punch.ev long range. Yeah. Uh, so the punch.ev long range gets a 36 kilo, 35 kilowatt hour battery and the punch EV gets a 25 uh, kilowatt hour battery. So the weight difference is roughly of the order of uh, 180, 200 kilograms on the uh, punch.ev and it increases to about uh, 270 kilograms on the uh, a long range battery. Got it. Okay. And you've spoken about the platform, but uh, what about the drivetrain? Now, compared to say a Nexon EV, mm -hmm. how much carryover is there? So, if you look at the Nexon EV, uh, we have the same powertrain. Yeah. Uh, but the powertrain has been tuned differently to deliver the torque and power requirements which is required out of a punch EV. Mm -hmm. uh, so, the, we are able to therefore harness those commonalities. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that's the beauty of the architecture mm -hmm. because uh, that helps us. Mm -hmm. It's a known um, a propulsion unit. Mm -hmm. We know the uh, performance, we know the reliability aspects of it and we know how it performs. We've, By the way, at the time that we did the Nexon.ev, mm -hmm. we had invested significantly in terms of its own uh, improvement of efficiency and mm -hmm. optimization, etc. So all of that gets carried over mm -hmm. into the punch.ev. Was it always part of the plan to do uh, revised bottom part of the punch when you bring the punch EV or was that a decision you made along the way? So there was a time when we thought uh, and uh, we've been asked this question earlier. Uh, so for example, the 2019-2018 Auto Expo, uh, I think we showed uh, there was a, uh, there was a uh, Altros uh, mm. sort of vehicle. Yes. Yeah. At that point of time, the, there was a thought that you could use the same uh, underpinnings, same platform. But as we went along, it became very apparent that uh, you cannot achieve the right optima for either an ICE or for an EV. And therefore, it was very important for us to make a very careful but very specific choice. And that's when we said that if this is going to last us for a long time in the future, mm -hmm. then it's better that it starts to fork out. Mm -hmm. uh, because you you start to get into uh, uh, weight benefits, you start to get into number of component benefits, you start to get into tooling benefits, mm -hmm. the yield on the platform changes. Mm -hmm. So for example, on this new platform, we've been able to improve the yield by about 5%, which is a significant number, uh, which otherwise wouldn't have happened. Uh, the ability to give uh, utility features like a frunk or a no compromise mm -hmm. boot space mm -hmm. also becomes possible. And so this has a frunk? Th this has a frunk, yes. Okay. Yeah. It has a, a decent frunk. Okay. And yeah, so that's different from the Nexon yes. EV. Yes. And so, it has a flat floor also. And it has a flat floor. So all of this, mm -hmm. uh, you, start to, uh, you start to unlock uh, these benefits which a EV needs. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's where we said, that if we are going to do this for a long term, uh, it's going to be an architecture that sustains mm. us for a number of products, then it is better that you unlock all these opportunities and th therefore we forked out. So to your question, uh, we forked out pretty early, but we did fork out. Uh, how important was the new plant where you're making this in the development of the Punch EV? Could you have done this at your earlier plant or has the new plant given you ability, efficiencies, opportunities? So the Punch continues to be uh, made in the uh, Pune plant. Okay because that's where the top hat is also made. Okay. What we have done is we invested significantly in the underfloor part of mm -hmm. it because that, as I said, is completely different. So there's a separate line running for the underfloor now. Mm -hmm. Then it all comes together at a point where the top hat uh, sort of gets integrated onto it and then it runs off a common uh, assembly line subsequently. Mm -hmm. uh, so the new plant uh, in uh, Sanand mm -hmm. uh, is not uh, enabled yet for okay. uh, a punch. The punch continues out of... Uh, 
पुणे ओके कमिंग बैक टू वे यू सेड यू फॉक्ट आउट व्हेन यू मेड दैट डिसीजन देन व्हाट वाज द प्रोसेस लाइक एज द इंजीनियर्स व्हेर डू यू स्टार्ट व्हाट डू यू लुक एट व्हेर वर द चैलेंजेस व्हेर वर द ऑपर्चुनिटीज सो व्हेन यू स्टार्ट टू डू दैट फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल इट मींस दैट यू हैव टू लुक एट हाउ सी फ्रॉम अ इंजीनियरिंग कंस्ट्रेंट पर्सपेक्टिव यू हैव टू मेक श्योर दैट द फुटप्रिंट इज नोन you you have uh, opportunities but you also have some uh, challenges in terms of doing that and then you also need to have for example if we needed to make a flat floor the floor typically mm. uh, takes in a significant amount of load but here you wanted to do a flat floor uh, which meant that the uh, load members on the side had to be reinforced or you also needed to add ultra high strength steel elements uh, to the entire front end structure because that's going to take the mm. uh, crash impulse mm. uh, plus you had to look at ergonomic uh, expectations mm. and when you look at the car tomorrow shirish mm. atesh you will find that it is such a beautiful balance mm. between uh, ingress egress uh, the chair height and the level of uh, comfort that you have that you would find it difficult to believe that it's uh, on an electric platform or because we have always thought that uh, electric vehicles you sit much have, higher and you sit much is, higher yeah. or you push the, uh, uh, the floor up mm. all of those compromises aren't there on the car the ground clearance remains the same the as the ground clearance remains the same as the combustion engine it's at 190 mm and okay. yet the battery is in place and yet we do not have a cramped uh, interior room. do you have more space than the combustion punch uh no the space remains the same okay. the space does remain the same because as i said the top hat is mm. still uh, mm. the sim- uh, similar or same mm. dimensions actually yeah. okay. uh, but the way that it has been engineered uh, you do not feel uh, any compromise at all if you had to look back and point out one big challenge that you all had to overcome what was that so the uh, i would think uh, to get all of this together and uh, to sort of make it within the timeline that we uh, had taken for ourselves because as I, as we said earlier we did fork out right so yeah. there was some time which was spent in making the right decision mm-hmm. i think to be able to manage all these elements together uh, can be challenging from a timeline perspective but uh, thankfully we've been able to sort of get everything organized very well in we terms of start. the long range punch and yeah. the ev max nexon the range is not that different maybe 30 40 kilometers yes uh, how do you avoid cannibalization between your two products the uh, cannibalization in terms of the range itself you mean no in terms of the product like why will a punch customer or why will a nexon customer not look at the punch see the nexon is a much larger car mm. yeah i mean from a footprint also it is larger battery capacity is larger the power enablement Uh, the tech mm. uh, is is also uh, significantly uh, it is higher i mm. would say so uh, somebody who is an exxon customer is already uh, somebody who is driving high end premium cars mm. and then he is wanting to also have an electric car as a run around mm. within the city mm. uh, so that's the kind of uh, customers that we look at when we talk about the nexon when it is uh, the punch.tv Uh, because of the way the car is configured because of the uh, very usable range that it will provide i mean it is at 421 kilometers mm. midc mm. but it will translate to roughly a 300 300 plus kilometers on in real yeah, life mm. now that means a great utility mm. uh, in a very small footprint mm. which is very agile maneuverable and which has decent amount of tech inside the car and capabilities of the car to be able to do most of your uh, daily and uh, run around and weekend drives as well mm. so therefore you get more people uh, wanting to come and switch into electrification and that's how we would like to see this mm-hmm. when yeah. we spoke the last time you didn't answer this question about the um, the cost that it would be to develop a new platform like this versus going and sticking to the old platform and and how that affects the final so i i will still not answer the question <laughs> but i remember that question very well because you said you actually proposed a number i didn't you uh, you did perhaps uh, or somebody else did perhaps i don't know uh, depending on your uh, or uh, taking a cue from your question which was said that uh, doing platforms of this sort takes anywhere between uh, uh, half to a billion dollars uh, and i said we wouldn't be able to give numbers i wouldn't give give no, numbers my today was more along the lines of what does it do for the end cost of the vehicle to customer no so look at it this way atish first of all i want to tell you that 
uh, I don't think it costs half a billion dollars to a billion dollars uh, to be able to do this. Mm -hmm. I think it's possible to do it uh, in much lesser. Uh, what less is that, I will not be able to get into. But also look at it this way, that when I tell you that the total number of parts is less, mm -hmm. when I tell you that ultra high strength steel content is uh, higher, so I am saving on weight, when I tell you that yield is higher, 5%, mm -hmm. and when I tell you that uh, I'm able to also save on the total number of dyes that I need for the entire underfloor, uh, so we've saved, uh, we've reduced the total number of dyes by about 40, 45 numbers, uh, right? Now, all of this is improvement. All of this is cost reduction. Mm. All of this is optimization. Mm. And yet the performance is better. The, uh, the scalability of that uh, entire platform is better. And therefore you have an unlocking of a virtuous cycle, if I may say, which then enables you to drive down unnecessary expenditure, mm. but not compromise on the performance. Mm. And that's what a pure electric platform does for you. Did you all have any products that you all were benchmarking when you all were developing this? There are many people who have taken this approach, uh, but not in the size that we are talking about. There are, uh, that way there is a, uh, it's not a very common thing for this kind of a format and this kind of a footprint to be done in the car that we have done. Mm. Uh, but when we are looking at uh, benchmarks, there are quite a few benchmarks. There are uh, some Chinese benchmarks, there are Korean benchmarks, there are uh, uh, some other people as well. Look, you don't have to compare it necessarily with a product you have to compare it with some approaches. When you look at those approaches, and then you solve for those specific use cases, I think you start to get a, a innovative solution. And that's what we've tried to do. All right, uh, so we're gonna drive the Punch EV tomorrow. Yes. What's the one thing that you want us to keep a particular eye out for? So look for the uh, extremely capable performance. Mm -hmm. I think we are also going to uh, show you a demonstration area or an experience area, I would say, mm -hmm. where the car does uh, some things that you would uh, find uh, uh, exciting mm -hmm. as well as surprising. Okay. So look out for that. All right, so tomorrow we are going to be driving the Punch EV and we're going to look out for surprising dynamic elements. Yes. Thank you, Anand, and uh, all the best with the Punch. Thank you, Shirish. Thank, Thank you, Atish. Always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.